If South Africa continues to, be lo continues to be lauded, that's praised, for its peaceful transition to democracy, 20 years on, it's often asked whether our story can inspire other groups in the rest of the world. Today, we focus on the Middle East. Joining me now in the studio is Israel's ambassador to South Africa, Arthur Lenk, and we've got Professor Farid Essak, who is from the Coalition for a Free Palestine. Gentlemen, good morning, and thank you very much uh, for coming in. I don't think in the time we have this morning we'll be able to resolve centuries-old conflict in the Middle East. But no, I just want, to, <laughs> just want to try and get a sense of where we are at now. Over the last month, there's been negotiations again uh, and facilitated by the United States between the Palestinians and the Israelis happening in, uh, in currently, as, as you know. Last week, uh, John Kerry, the U U.S. Secretary of State, met with the Palestinian President Abbas in London, and both of them agreed there was a need to try and intensify the progress of, of these current Middle East peace talks. Some Palestinian groups feel there's no progress at all, but the Americans tend to, tend to differ, and uh, the Israelis believe in, in, in this process that it can help. I just want to get a sense from you from what you're seeing, how do you think? Let's start with you, Ambassador. What's your view on the current negotiations? I think one of the great lessons we have from South Africa, Nelson Mandela talked us, taught us to talk with our enemies, to find a way to work together. That's what Israelis and Palestinians are doing today. They're difficult issues in a very complicated region with Syria to the north and Egypt to the south. And we have hard issues, and it's different than in this area of the world, but we have to talk and negotiate and stick it out so that we can work it out for the benefit of Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, Professor Isaac? Well, I think that uh, invariably, in all situations of conflict, uh, there is desperate need for uh, conversations, especially if those conversations are to be an alternative uh, to the ongoing humiliation of people or to massacres or to endless cycles of very, very destructive human lives that future generations, in fact, end up paying for. So in principle, yes. Um, people, regardless of how they describe each other, uh, terrorists or occupiers, fundamentalists, radicals, regardless of how we wish to describe those who disagree with us, at the end of the day, as human beings, we have no alternative but to talk to each other. A question I have in my mind is there's been several attempts in the past. I remember myself being a young journalist at the time uh, 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 when the Oslo Agreement wa was signed. I think it's about uh, a decade ago, uh, on the 10th of September, the late PLO uh, leader Yasser Arafat and with Yitzhak Rabin, the Prime Minister of Israel, signing the Oslo Agreement under President Bill Clinton in, in the White House. And that, that sort of said, okay, you're an, you an unelected representative of the people of Palestine, but we want to talk. Let's move forward. And there was a recognition of Israel's right to exist as a state. It looked like, yes, there's hope. Do you have hope today about the current process that we'll find a resolution? Ambassador. I do have hope. I'm raising three daughters, and uh, the only way to live together is hope. And I want them to be able to live with our Palestinian neighbors in two separate states. It's different than in this country. Here, South Africans need to get married. In my region, we need to get divorced. Israelis and Palestinians need to have their own states. But you get divorced, but with good neighborliness, peace and security is important. That's exactly right. We have to find a way for Israelis and Palestinians to be secure, to be safe, to build their own future, to offer opportunities for their sons and daughters, just like I want for mine. Professor Isaac, well, what's your view about <laughs> It's an interesting analogy. Um, uh, I can also put it in this way, that uh, the entire world saw the separation of human beings from human beings on the basis of race and ethnicity as the problem, and they called it apartheid. The ambassador comes along and saying that, well, uh, that is the solution, the separation of people uh, from each other on the basis of race and ethnicity. I think that South Africa knows a very deep history of bitter hatred, of wanting to idubula, ibuna, uh, shoot the boer, uh, of, of wanting to drive all white people into the sea. South Africa, and, and of course, let's not forget the concentration camps uh, where one sixth of the Afrikaner population died at the hands of the British. And so the deaths of hundreds and thousands of people in the middle of all of this, South Africa is able to say, humanness is not essentially about the need for people to run away from each other, to live in fear of each other. Humanness is essentially about the ability of human beings to overcome our past hatred and to create a new society, not based on the separation of people from okay, people. But, but separation in terms of states, would you agree mm -hmm. with that uh, Palestine exists as an independent state, Israel exists as well as a state? In that regard, you would agree with that? Uh, I would agree that if uh, nations get together and decide that this is our state, uh, 
here we have an African state living right in the middle of Africa, yeah. Swaziland. I have no issues with the existence of Swaziland. Okay, Professor Isaac, you I are... I have no existence with the, issue with the existence of Israel uh, inside a larger Middle East. Okay, you are a South African yes. who is part of a coalition for a free Palestine. Yes. Looking from far, Ambassador is an envoy. He's an Israeli. He comes from yes. the region and he represents that area. As a South African, what yes. would you say to him if he had an opportunity to say from you as a South African who's a friend of the Palestine, how do you think they can, we can embrace each other, Palestinians and Israelis? As a South African, I would say that <coughs> the one problem, my brother, that Israel has to delink itself from is the idea that the solution to that region's problem lies in getting more of the same type there. The Boers, the whites, never thought the solution to South Africa's problem lies in getting all other Afrikaners, all other Dutch into South Africa, and therefore complicate all our things. So you're talking about Jewish settlements? That's correct. Is it and one of the key issues for Palestinians? Absolutely. You see, the problem with negotiation is I can't talk to you about the division of this pizza that both of us agree. You have a share in, I have a share in. I can't sit down and talk to you about how do we divide this pizza up when a minister in my government or half of my government insists that as the talking is going to continue, we're going to be giving permission to our people to continue eating on the pizza. Well, Ambassador, and this is the problem of the settlements. What's the rationale? Just educate us a little bit. What's the rationale? Very quick. What's the rationale behind the ongoing building of Jewish settlements, which is, build, is one of the stumbling blocks? I know there are several others, well, well, but just Well, on well this that's one. exactly it. There are a range of issues that Israelis and Palestinians need to talk about, and that's the reason it's been going on so long. But, but I'm confused by some of the things I'm hearing this morning. Israelis and Palestinians agree on the idea that there needs to be a two-state solution. It's yeah. South African policy too. Not that we want to separate each other based on race, but we have different views and visions on how our future should be, and we agree on that. What we need to do and what South Africa can do, where you can come in and, and, and because you have this warm relationship and a history with the Palestinian people, is encourage them to talk, encourage them to compromise. The lessons of South Africa are that's what you need to do, and that we need to live side by side with our own futures, building our own benefit, but the old opportunities for our different people. Is South Africa currently supporting the latest talks? Well, actually, yes. The uh, Durko came out with a statement together with some of your BRICS neighbors saying that you support the Kerry Initiative and encourage Israelis and Palestinians to talk and to make peace. Yeah, there's lots of issues. I mean, I don't, we can't go into all of them besides the status of East Jerusalem and all of that, but we're just hoping that... Uh, the, you know, f watching from far and from a media perspective, that this time at least there could be there could be a solution. And Ambassador, just from your perspective as an envoy to South Africa, what can South Africa and Israel do together? Oh, I think that there are lots of things. I think that for, firstly, that what I talked about about sh learning from South Africa's experience is valu very valuable to Israelis and to Palestinians. But I think that there are things that Israel can bring to South Africa too. Israeli agriculture takes place here in South Africa. I visited. Uh, farms where Israeli drip irrigation is used for the benefit of farmers. There are Israeli technologies that can help prevent HIV, that can help have circumcision without doctors, without any, 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 any anesthesia, and allow for people to save lives to prevent HIV. Using Israeli innovation to benefit South Africans would be a wonderful thing, and we, that's what friendly countries do. Is that a tool for circumcision? It is actually, and you see it's, it's just a piece of plastic, but it's this modern innovation that can allow for males to avoid and have the risk of HIV be dropped by 60%. 60%. Think of the millions of lives in Africa. Okay, you can, can you should talk to Dr. Aaron Mutsualedi, the health minister yeah. of South Africa, about that. Thank you very much. That's Israeli ambassador to South Africa, Arthur Lek, and Professor Farid Esak from the Coalition for a Free Palestine, sharing a few uh, their views around the Middle East peace process currently. News that moves. ENCA.com.